guys welcome back it's time for a feb update um i'll say that it's been very very cold lately it's been snowing a lot outside in new york city it's been um not so great i haven't really left my apartment this month too much just because the sidewalks have been very icy the parks have been uh, full of snow and i usually go out uh, during my lunch break and in the mornings but given that the weather hasn't been very nice i've just been staying in with that said, despite the cold weather outside, my orchids have been doing very well. So um, I'm noticing a lot of new growths on all of my orchids, my Cattleyas in particular. Um, they've been pushing out new growths. Um, they've been pushing out new roots. Same with my Oncidiums. So I'm gonna be repotting everything very, very quickly, very soon. I was thinking I'd wait until um, April to start repotting but I think I have to get started right now just because everything's so accelerated in my opinion I haven't seen um, my orchids grow this fast before I think it's a combination of the lights the humidity um, the fertilizer that I've been using and um, I think they're, they're they seem to be happy my temperatures have been between um, 60 and 80 degrees generally. It's on the cooler side if I crack a window open or if they're in my bedroom. It's on the warmer side if there's a lot of heat that day. Um, I'd say they're usually in the 70-ish range during the day, upper 70s. And then at night um, is when they hit closer to 60, 65 around there. Um, with that said, let me show you the uh, updates for the month. So lots going on this month. Let me take you a little bit closer so you can see how everything is looking. But we'll start on this shelf. And the first thing that you guys will see is the spike for my heaven sent sweet baby. So last month, this was already in bloom and it was sort of, sort of coming out of bloom already. And it pushed up another flower spike. And it is massive. So I think the light on top is actually uh, getting it to grow towards that direction. So that's going to be a really, really nice show when it's done. But that's become one of my more reliable bloomers. It's the fourth spike that I have since I got it over the summer. So I'm very happy with how it's doing. As you can see, we have a couple of blooms here. This white and pink uh, Phalaenopsis is my very first orchid ever. It's given me 13 new buds. So that one's very pretty. I just have it hanging here, um, just cascading. And then I've got my Sogo Vivian down here, which you guys have seen. And once again, I am doing a uh, semi-hydroponic transition video. It includes this orchid and a couple of others, where I'm gonna walk you through the three-month update on how they're transitioning into semi-hydroponic LECA. I've got my Multasia Dark Star, the Orchid Works over here. This one is also a very reliable bloomer for me. It's pushed out a second spike. This was in bloom in November and it's Feb with another flower spike. And it's given me a second flower spike, which is great. Twinkle Oro is still in bloom and it's gonna be blooming sequentially since it had 14 different flower spikes in different uh, stages. So we have some that are still in bud, some that have faded already that I cut off, and um, it'll, I think it'll last a couple more months. Typically the blooms last for a month in total once they bloom, but given that they're in different stages, we've got some buds coming, as you can see back here. We've got a Dendrobium a Pink Natasha, which I'll take out and show you guys in a bit. But those are the orchids in bloom. I've got my seedlings over here. They're doing really well under the heat mat. Um, they're all generally pushing out good roots. They really like the, uh, the warmth uh, from the bottom. And then I've got a bunch of Oncidiums here, a house plant, and then my Dendrobium um, chocolate chip. This is the one that came to me from Hawaii that got stuck in transit for two weeks. So some of the leaves are getting damaged, but we've got some new growths coming in, which you can see over here. And these were new growths that came when this was in transit, they wilted off, but I'm gonna be repotting this soon just because I'm seeing quite a few new growths here and new roots are pushing out. 
Um, Oncidiums are doing really well. They're growing larger bulbs, as you can see here. This was a seedling. This bulb bloomed, and now this bulb is much larger, which is good progression. But I have to get these orchids out of their clay pots immediately because they need water constantly. So that's also something I'm going to be doing very soon. The catacetums down here are going into dormancy or already dormant. And I've got a couple that are coming out of dormancy, which I've kept separate, which I'll show you in a bit. We've got a variety of different orchids here. I got my little stars down here, my, one of my cattleyas. I've got my Monurara Millennium Magic Witchcraft over here, which is pushing out tons of new roots. It's also um, growing quite nicely. So this one, as you can see, the roots are pushing down really well. They're even branching. So I am very pleased with the progression for this one. And look at that new growth. So this is gonna have a, I think it's gonna have a larger bulb than this one. Um, let's see. I've got a bunch of Phalaenopsis down here. They're growing. I'll show you about those fowls in a bit, but they're all growing tons of new roots. Um, they're just basically going through the pot. That hieroglyphica has some buds. My zygopedlum's in the back growing. I think I need to repot it soon. It's doing really well. Um, my Asco Phoenicia cherry blossom is actually making a recovery. Let me see if I can show you what I noticed this morning. So I was inspecting this and I noticed this root. So I'm very pleased with this. As you guys know, um, about a month ago, I took it out of the semi-hydroponic setup because I did not like it. And um, it's pushing out some new roots. So I think this one will make a full recovery. This is not the case with uh, my Tulumnia. This one looks like it's not happy. It does have some new growths, but I'm not really holding my breath. I don't know if this is gonna make it. I haven't had a fatality in a while. Um, I only had one fatality last year. So this might be the next one, just keeping it real. I don't know if this is gonna make it. I've got my Dendrobium Angel Baby Cakeys over here. I repotted it recently. And this is a new addition. So this one is a new addition from my mom. This one is the Papiopetalum Armeni White. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. The last orchid I killed was actually a Papiopetalum last year, so I hope I can be successful with it. My Cattleyas are all doing really well. All of them are growing new roots. Many of them are throwing out and pushing out new, um, new growths. I'll show you a few of them. My Brassavola digbiana, I actually recorded a care video on this yesterday, which I'll upload later in the week. But my cat actually knocked it over. I'll put a picture for you guys to see, but I was really upset this morning. I had to repot it. Thankfully, I don't think the root system is too bad, but I was really upset with her this morning. Pretty excited. I have a couple of buds on my Cattleyas, which I'll show you um really soon but i have two in bud right now and i i'm really pleased with the light so far coming up here this is the uh, dendrobium anosmum so this one is actually coming out of bloom this one has been in bloom actually for about three and a half weeks yeah i think it's it's on its last legs i love the fragrance of this one but it lasted three and a half weeks. Hopefully this will give me a new growth uh, shortly. And then I will resume watering and fertilizing it um, in the next couple of weeks. In the back, we've got Buttercup. I will take you closer in a bit. This one's my Oncidium Raspberry uh, Chocolate, AKA Baby Raspberry Chocolate. I repotted it yesterday into this massive pot. So hopefully it won't need a repot for a while. Nobly is in the back, doing pretty well. Spanish Eyes has a new 
uh, cane. I think this one will actually um, bloom for me. It's the strongest cane that I've seen grown so far. And then all of the cattleyas in general, they're just pushing out so many new roots. So let me take you a little bit closer to everything that's uh, doing something this month. So here's a closer look at Dendrobium Pink Natasha. She's got some really pretty um, purple flowers. I really like her. This is a first time bloomer for me and she's just opening up. No fragrance, but she's very, very pretty. I like her colors. I grew this 100% under lights. She's in a bark and sphagnum moss setup. And there's actually four plants in there. So when I repot it, I'll be sharing some divisions with friends. What I really like about her is the color inside of her lip. As you can see, it has a lighter color right in the middle. This one's really pretty. I got her from Carmela Orchids. All right, so taking a look, a closer look at my summer bloomers, I've got my Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica here. It is pushing out buds. It has a total of seven flower spikes. Um, and I'm very excited about this one because I really, really like the flowers. So you can see the buds forming right there. And what is just incredible to me about the Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica is the incredible root system. So I got this orchid in September and the roots are just growing through the pot uh, pretty aggressively. And I have another summer bloomer. I got this at Hauserman Orchids as well back in September. I repotted and same situation over here. So I think these summer bloomers are really happy under my care. They are in sphagnum moss and I am pondering repotting them. So LD Bears King has two or three new flower spikes. So I think they are gearing up to give me some bloom soon. Yeah, three flower spikes on LD Bears King. So the summer bloomers are starting to wake up. Moving on to my Maxillaria tenifolia, I have two of them. I purchased them together from Carmela Orchids. The one on the left is the yellow form and the one on the right is the uh, pink purple form, the original. I'm just finding that they're growing differently. The regular form on the right is bushier on the bottom and the one on the left has a bigger climbing habit and is giving me more bulbs. I think they're gearing up for buds soon. As you can see, it's just been growing very vigorous. Um, it has new growths coming in. So this one, I can't wait to see. Here's a new growth right here, which you can see coming through. This one also has another growth coming in here, unless, I'm not sure, I haven't grown these yet. That, that's probably a new growth, probably not a bud, um, but we'll see. I haven't um, rebloomed these on my own yet, but this is definitely a new growth. Here's the pink version. So this one, as I mentioned, it's just more together on the bottom. It really hasn't been doing much until recently. And I'm starting to see that it's pushing out some new growths. It just has less of a climbing habit, which is interesting. So I'm not seeing, um, I'm not seeing the leaves get long like the yellow form, but I'm also seeing that it's growing, but they're like more on the bottom. I'll say that the, these two pots have a terrible algae problem. As you can see, there's flies. I hate it. <laughs> so I'm going to be repotting them um, over the summer at some point, but covering them up with transparent, not transparent. I won't be using transparent pots for these. But I wanted to quickly show you my maxillary tenifolias. I do want to give you guys an update on dendrobium buttercup. So it was growing this new cane over here. Everything was growing great. Everything looked strong. I thought this orchid was coming through and pulling through out of whatever deficiency it had. Then a couple of weeks ago, it started spotting again. Uh, pretty significantly all over those leaves that were growing very strong. So 
I, I've been trying to rehab this plant since I repotted it back in the fall. And as you can see, I've cut the leaves off every time it's grown um, a very weak growth that was spotting and yellowing off. I think I'm going to give up on this plant. I may just throw it in the garbage. I'm honestly, it's honestly been months. I don't know if this is a viral infection or a uh, nutrient deficiency, but I have a friend that has this orchid that has the same issue. And she got it from the same place that I did. And I have the same orchid that I gave to my mom and it's having the same issue. So I don't know if it's from the same crop and it's just not a very vigorous plant, but I think it's time I let go of this orchid. I do give it very good care. I thought it was pulling through and at this point, I don't think it will. It just continues to give me these spots and the new growths just keep dying off. So I don't think I'm gonna keep this one any longer. All right, so here we've got my Bellera Big Shot Hilo, um, Hilo Sparkle. This one, I actually repotted it yesterday. It's got a new growth, so the timing was perfect. I put it into Leca and a little pumice with a layer of uh, gravel, aquarium gravel to keep the moisture in. Hopefully it does well. And I wanted to also show you my Oncidium um, AKA Baby. I put in a really, really big pot. It's a seven inch pot, massive water reservoir. I wanna show you guys this because I was repotting this orchid. I repotted about four different orchids yesterday. And when I got to this one, you can tell that it was one of those orchids that had been in moss for a long time. It had a plug, then it had a moss plug, and then they just put more moss around it. So it was in a four inch pot, but the root ball was just taking over the entire pot. So after repotting the Bolero, which was somewhat difficult, I did not have the patience for this, um, <laughs> this um, Oncidium over here. So I got a little bit impatient. It took me about three hours to do this, but I'm gonna admit that I just cut through the middle of the root ball to get the moss out. And I was a little bit rough. I had to take a break because I felt bad, but have you guys ever been there when you're repotting an orchid for hours? Like it's usually the Oncidiums that give you so much trouble. I just started hacking away at the roots. I'm just gonna admit it. Hopefully this bulb will not uh, desiccate on me. We'll see if it's, if it's really, really bad, it's gonna shrivel up. But my hope is that this new growth continues to push through. So it has a new growth here. You can't see it because it's sort of under the gravel, but it also has another tiny growth pushing in. So hopefully I did not mess this orchid up too bad and it does take a couple of weeks and so you start seeing the damage if you mess up the roots a lot but i wanted to share these two okay now i'm really excited for this one this is my blc solar flare paradise and we've got buds and we've got three of them so I am very thrilled with this. These are the first buds that I have under the new grow lights. The ones where I just updated to three. So I am very, very happy. And this orchid smells like lemon. I remember it bloomed for me last summer. Um, I got it in bloom, so I can't wait. I have another Cattleya in bud right now. So this one's the BLC Hinging Greenworth. This was actually in bud when before the lights, because I remember seeing something, but we've got two new buds coming in here. This is a really, really fragrant orchid. I cannot wait to see it again. Hopefully it doesn't dry off. Um, this is an orchid where I got a little bit overzealous with the neem oil and I put it on and that was the result that burned there. Um, so don't put too much neem oil on your orchids, guys. Dilute it always. I want to quickly show you a couple of my other Cattleya orchids. So these orchids, most of them are looking this way, but the root systems have just gone insane. They're growing through the bottom of the pot. I repotted most of them in July and almost all of them look this way. So I need to figure something out very quickly 
um, you know, wasn't even in here that long, but I just started noticing most of my cattleyas are starting to push out new growths. So you can see right here, we've got a new growth coming in. So I need to repot these ASAP. I'm just conflicted. I don't know. I, I know cattleyas dump their roots, but the roots are so new. I think they can live. All of them have green tips, but I just hope I don't damage them. This one also has a new growth, as you can see right over here. So I was thinking I was going to be repotting these orchids in, um, in April, but I have to get started ASAP, just given the new growth um, and the situation going on right now. Like, this is insane. Shari baby over here. This is my second ever orchid. She is in spike. I'm really excited to see this bloom. She hasn't been in bloom since 2017 because I uh, I didn't take good care of her before, but I know that now she's getting the care that she needs. Her bulbs are getting bigger again. I'm not dehydrating her any longer. Um, so I look forward to seeing her in bloom again. And quick update on my catacetums. Here's my Rebecca Northern cross with Orchid Glade. I repotted her maybe a month ago and she is pushing out a new growth. Still not time to be watered though. So I'm gonna hold out until that bulb gets bigger until I start seeing roots. More roots rather. This um, catacetum over here is pushing out a new growth. So I will be repotting her probably over the weekend, get ahead of that getting larger and throwing out new roots. And then my sick no cheese is, um, this is the one with the broken cane that I pulled off. She's got a new growth. So I wasn't sure if it was a spike or a growth. It's definitely a spike. And I'm gonna keep the top of this orchid just because a node can form, rather, a growth can form along one of the nodes. So I'm going to just put her on top of the pot when I'm done with it. But yeah, these are my updates for the month. I'll say that things are growing pretty nicely. The biggest update I'd say is on my cat, um, Catlia orchids. All of the orchids I got from Sunset Valley Orchids, I have repotted them into a semi-hydroponic setup, a traditional setup with holes on the bottom, just to give it a go. Since I normally do self-watering and I wanted to trial that out, um, just for watering efficiency purposes. But I'd say that the biggest thing this month are my cattleyas just really starting to grow, pushing out new growths in general, and um, needing repots very soon. So I'm really happy with them. I'm looking forward to seeing more buds and more um, sheets very soon. So I'm very excited. I know that as I head into spring, there's just, there's just gonna be a lot more coming. So that's it for the month of Feb. Um, as you guys can see, there's a lot going on. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about my cattleyas. Um, the roots have taken over the pots, so I've, I really need to get on that. So I'm gonna start repotting um, basically ASAP. So I'm going to spend most of Feb and March just repotting a lot of my orchids. I'm moving them all to a semi-hydroponic setup just to make my life easier when I get back to work. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more orchid updates. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!